Hey everyone, welcome back to Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics. The snow is almost melted. It's springtime. No hat. Behind me, it's a 2005 Chevy 2500 HD. Customer brought it from like an hour away. Just saw a YouTube video and said, Hey, I want you to fix my truck. Uh, I said, You know, what's the problem with it? Well, he says, uh, when he's driving 40 to 50 miles an hour, sometimes his check engine light starts flashing and the truck runs fine. Interesting. Check engine light, he says, stays on after that. And then, uh, just recently, he said he's losing voltage at high RPM. He said, it's, you know, he's driving at night, he floors in, his like, lights start dimming, and I don't know. So, let's grab a scanner, check this thing out. Ah, it's nice to have a big screen, you see everything. So, you know, little handheld scanners, I would use them for if they have the capability for quick checks, but not really looking at data, recording data, it's just pain in the butt, and just get the bigger one. So, let's jump right in. Chevrolet 2005, and it should just read the VIN, I don't know why you have to tell it the year. Should figure it out on its own. <clears throat> yep, it's a six liter V8. American Muscle. Should we do a whole code scan or just go for the engine? Automatic. All codes. I love the Varus because every time you scan something, it'll just save it right in that history. Awesome feature. All right, 0059, heater resistance bank two sensor one. Mass airflow circuit will leave for later. Low O2 activity bank two sensor one. O2 heater circuit bank two sensor one. Man, they really uh, are hammering the sensor. P0300 and 2101 TAC motor circuit range performance. So in this case, we're not going to erase anything. Let's just look at data. Engine data, misfire data, fuel trims. We can look at anything. Let's start with the basics. Take this thing for a test drive. Horses are excited about the warm weather too. All right, let's see here, custom engine, coolant, math, TPS, open loop, closed loop, bank one, sensor one, bank one, sensor two, bank two, sensor one, bank two, sensor two. So all four. And reduce power. I mean, let's do the short and long term trims. That's it for now. List view. All right, let's fire this thing up. Finally. All right, I got oil pressure, I got fuel, charging system voltage. So bank one, sensor one, and bank two, sensor one. That's the guy that was flagged. It's already starting to run a little crappy. Kind of shaking. Rev it up a little bit. Bank one sensor two, bank two sensor two, these are the downstreams, they're still reading zero, they're cold. But, we're still in open loop, so too early to tell. However, this guy is slowly warming up. Um, let's slow to respond. How can we 
be 100% here. Let's save that little capture and go back to sensor data. And I think these trucks, they can read the amps on the heaters. So bank two sensor one, zero amps. So that tells us that the heater circuit is indeed open. So it need, needs at least the bank to sensor one. Oxygen sensor, I've seen this many times. You know, we could be 100% plugging that test light on the heater, you know, on the connector, make sure it lights up, make sure this thing can send it power, but. Okay, um, so you can't, you can't even go to closed loop. <clears throat> All the rest of them, the heaters are still good. When it comes to oxygen sensor replacement, I like to do at least the two front, you know, upstreams at the same time because if one of them burned out, the other one is pretty close behind. It's like changing one headlight bulb. Just change both of them because the other one is going to burn out, you know, next week. <laughs> just, you know, for just from experience, to prevent comebacks. Alrighty, so definitely flagging that O2 sensor. But still, we want to take it for a test drive and look at misfires. Just to see what's counting up and what's not. Take it for a spin. By the way, check this out. In the history, Miss History 1, Miss History 5. They're counting way up. However, the guy said he doesn't really feel a misfire. Okay. But, still got to take it for a test drive and verify that. And, you know, if we have a bad oxygen sensor, could it be causing a bank, like the odd bank, to start running crappy? We've seen that before, and we'll have misfires, but um, let's just take it for a spin. All right, check out those misfire numbers. Yep, cylinder five's counting up. Six and eight. Truck's running beautiful, though. Good power. So in this case, do we have the classic uh, crankshaft sensor that needs to be calibrated? I've seen this before, right around you know 100,000 miles, you just start getting these false misfire counters. That's just from you know the, when it was, the engine was new. The cam and the crank correlation, they change just ever so slightly and then the engine thinks it's misfiring when it's really not. So I think that's problem number one. So we can actually pull over and do the crank relearn on this thing and make sure those misfire codes don't return. So that's the P0300. Oxygen sensor we can order. And then we still have his low voltage complaint and the uh, throttle position codes, but he didn't really say the truck, you know, lost pop. So those codes might be related to something, might not be. So in the history, definitely, see we got, we got number one, number five, number six, and number eight that are not happy. So under light throttle, it's okay. You give it some throttle. Right there, there's a tabby spot. All right, exit out of here. Functional test, CKP variation learn. Set parking brake, block drive wheels, cycle ignition from off to on. Hold, apply and hold brake pedal start engine until 70C is reached, AC is off, and vehicle must be remain in park in neutral. We'll turn off the lights. There we go. Continue. The next step, do not let vehicle over accelerate past fuel cutoff. Should occur between four and 5,000. Continue. Accelerate full throttle until fuel cutoff, waiting for full throttle. That's it. 
learn successful easy as that pretty cool so now exit out of here back I want to just erase all the codes just because yes no more check engine light turn off turn on alrighty no codes present awesome right back to our misfires All right, let's take it for a spin. Fixed. I like it. <laughs> I think that's a, at least the third truck that I've done this procedure on and no comebacks, that's all it needs is that relearn. So false P0300. I'm going to keep driving it. I haven't seen any voltage drops yet. I mean a couple O2 sensors, but hey, that's, that's pretty easy. Alright, so I got the O2 sensors pulled up. Check out the difference between one where the heater works, bank one sensor one. See it's going from about 0.1 to 0.8 volts and this guy is the response is just really crappy it's around 500 millivolts but since it's warm it's active but the heater is not working so I guess it's not causing fuel trim problems yet we're gonna get that low activity code right back Alright, the low voltage complaint. Here's the voltmeter. If you goose it, I mean, you really gotta get on it. Look at that voltage, it's dropping. Interesting. It comes right back up to 14. Is that normal? Great question. Let's pull over and look at some scan data. All right, let's see if this alternator is smart. Electrical accessories theft data. So, let's see what we got here. Deselect all. Ignition one voltage, we can do that. Gen F terminal signal percent. I want to see like a command and signal, okay. Reduced power. There's like a command voltage. But we can at least look at those. 13.5. Command. Let's goose it again and see if that does anything. So I found a very interesting correlation here. If the RPMs are above 3500, the voltage starts to drop. Very, very strange. <laughs> Never seen that before. So we're gonna plot RPMs and ignition voltage. Right now we're at 13.5. That's the set point. And then uh, see what this thing does. Will I need a new alternator? Not sure. So what we can do is first drop it down into first gear so it won't upshift. And now let's go. 2,000, 3,000. Now what the hell? It's supposed to stay in first.
There we go. First gear. Why the hell did it shift? to see if it doesn't park. Jeez. I want to like blow this truck up. Alright. Let's see what we do when uh, Yeah, there it goes. Sure enough. It's just RPM dependent. Right at 3,400. Wow, that is nuts. How do we uh, diagnose that? Gen L terminal command is always on. What happened to the signal during those low periods? Well, it kind of went to zero or whatever. Zoom in a little bit. Let's rev it up again. Not charging, not charging. Signals at zero. Come back up. Everything gets bright again. And we're charging, back up and charging. Amazing. Can we just call a bad alternator right from this? I would say yes, there's nothing else really to, uh, you know, unless it's programmed to turn off at. 3,000 RPM, but the Gen L terminal from the computer to the alternator isn't saying turn it off. So that is that is bizarre. The guy wasn't kidding. Let's try again. Very particular set point. 32, there he goes, 3,300. It's either on or off. You see the lights dim. Right. Dim. So, so I guess you're okay if you stay below 3,500 RPM, which on this truck is plenty fast, <laughs> I would think. But I mean, we could put an amp clamp on the alternator, but or uh, look up some TSBs, see why it wouldn't charge at above 3,500 RPM. That's pretty neat. <laughs> 